Hello everyone, welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to present you the basic knowledge about membrane. We hope you enjoy our video. So, what is membrane? Membrane is a thin sheet that is capable of separating mixture to produce desired products. It is now widely used in industry for different separation processes involving aqueous, gas, or organic solvents. The driving forces in membrane processes are gradients in the hydrostatic pressure, the chemical potential, and the electrical potential. Have you ever wondered when was the very first time the membrane was reported? The membrane process was first demonstrated by Jean-Anthony Nollet in the 18th century. Nollet, who was a French, used big splatter to show the flow of solvent molecules from low solid water into higher solid concentration through bladder wall. So, who were the great scientists to develop the modern membrane for practical use? The modern membrane, which is in the asymmetric structure, was first reported by Loeb and Suri Rajan in the late 1959. Loeb was a master student, while Suri Rajan was doing his postdoctoral at UCLA when the historical breakthrough was made. Loeb passed away in 2008, but Suri Rajan is still alive and currently living in Ottawa, Canada. Just in case, if you're very interested to know more about how the Loeb Surirajan membrane came about, you may access this article written by Loeb in 1981. The first asymmetric membrane that was invented by Loeb and Surirajan was aimed to separate salts from seawater in order to produce potable water. The membrane was made using dope composed of 22.2 weight percent of cellulose acetate, 66.7% acetone, 10% water, and 1.1% of magnesium perchlorate. The dope was then cast on a plate followed by water immersion to initiate phase inversion. Here are the images showing the asymmetric structure of the membrane that was composed of extremely thin dense layer supported by a spongy like structure. Right now, the Loeb Surirajan membrane is more than 60 years old. A special issue was published by the Chemical Engineering Research and Design in 2021 to celebrate the 60 years of the Loeb Surirajan asymmetric membrane. We believe that you will be thrilled with another special issue to celebrate the 100 years of Loeb Surirajan membrane in 2060. Next, let us show you some of the main applications of the membrane technology. Perhaps, many of you do not know that the hemodialysis that saves millions of lives worldwide is using semi-permeable membrane to remove waste products such as urea from the blood. Besides offering treatment to kidney patients, membrane is also widely used to produce high-quality water from the seawater to meet the water demand in water-scare countries since the 1970s. Over the past two decades, membrane has also been increasingly used to treat sewage and industrial effluent either to reclaim the water or to produce treated effluent that can be safely discharged to the receiving water body. Other important applications of membrane technologies could also be found in the automotive industry to power the car using fuel cell, as well as in the beverage industry to produce alcohol-free beer using the reverse osmosis membrane. In the oil and gas industry, membrane technology has also been found useful in removing sour gases from the natural gas while offering high performance throughout its lifespan. So, what is the market demand on the membrane technology now and in the near future? According to the reports released by BCC Publishing, reverse osmosis system components for water treatment is anticipated to grow by two digits from 11.7 billion in 2020 to more than 19.1 billion in 2025. Separately, ultrafiltration membrane seals are also forecast to increase gradually between the year 2020 and 2025 and is also expected to reach 5.5 billion in 2025. For the other sectors such as medical membrane devices, membrane bioreactors, and materials for proton exchange membranes, global growth is expected in the coming years. In this section, we will provide an overview on the common materials used to fabricate membranes. Generally, two main materials are commonly used to fabricate commercial membranes. They are either polymeric materials or inorganic materials. 
Each material has its pros and cons, but in terms of market share, the membranes made of polymeric materials contribute 85-90% to 90 of the market share. Some of the common materials used for polymeric membranes fabrications are polysulfone, polyether sulfone, cellulose acetate, polyvinylidene difluoride, and polyamide. While for the ceramic membranes, aluminium oxide, zirconium dioxide, and titanium dioxide are commonly utilized. Depending on the membrane properties such as pore size, porosity, and hydrophilicity, several classes are used to differentiate these membranes. For instance, there are four classes of pressure-driven membranes in the water treatment. From the diagram, microfiltration membrane, which possesses the largest pore size, is usually used to remove particles larger than 0.1 micron from the feed solution. Ultrafiltration membrane with tighter pore size compared to the microfiltration membrane is suitable to remove macromolecules with size between 2 and 500 kilodaltons. In order to remove smaller molecules such as dyes, micropolitans, and dissolved ions, nanofiltration membrane is very often employed. In this diagram, reverse osmosis is the only membrane that can achieve promising removal rates against sodium chloride and thus is practically used in brackish water and seawater desalination. There are quite a number of membrane configurations. Usually, for the polymeric membranes, one can find five major types of membrane configuration in the market. Plate and frame, as well as hollow fiber membranes, are the typical configuration for the microfiltration and ultrafiltration process. Spiral wound membrane module, meanwhile, is used in the nanofiltration and reverse osmosis process and can be operated at pressure up to 30 and 40 bar. Tubular membranes are primarily used in filtration process due to their ability to handle process streams with high concentration of solids. In recent years, nanofiber membranes are receiving great attention owing to its extremely high porosity and large effective surface area. For the ceramic membranes, there are two main configurations which are plate and frame that is very similar to the polymeric membrane and multi-channel ceramic. So, what are the unique advantages of membranes compared to the conventional filtration methods? The first one is the excellent removal rate. For instance, reverse osmosis membrane can remove up to 99.8% of total dissolved solids from the seawater. Second, its separation efficiency is very reliable, which means the membrane can handle a wide range of solution. Third, small footprint. Due to its compact module or design, the membrane system can offer a relatively smaller footprint compared to the conventional processes. The fourth one is scalability. The system's capacity can be easily upscaled by having more membrane modules if demand is increased in the future. Lastly is simple operations as it only requires minimum labor for both operation and maintenance. So, we have now come to the end of our video. We really hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe.